Well, good morning again. We are in uh, in week three uh, of this series called All In, and we're looking at what Jesus said was the greatest commandment. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, we talked about loving God with all of our hearts. The Greek word there is cardia or lev. Uh, last week, we talked about loving God with all of our soul, which is the Greek word suke or nefesh in the, in the Hebrew. And so if you are, uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, we're kind of walking through this. Uh, somebody comes to Jesus and they, and they says, he says, uh, Hey, what's the, what's the greatest commandment? There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of things out there. What's the, if you could tell us one thing to focus on, if you could tell us one thing, that's just the, the most important thing that you want us to remember, what would that be? And he says, uh, Jesus resp- responds, uh, and he's, he's repeating, he's quoting the, uh, the, the Deuteronomy 6 passage, but uh, he says it here in Mark 12, 29 through 31. He says, listen, Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandments greater than these. That's what we're that's what we're going through. Part of the greatest commandment, the thing that Jesus says is the most important thing is to he tells us to love God with all of our minds, our thoughts, our knowledge, our intellect. So this morning we're going to talk about that, what it looks like to love God with all of our minds. Father, as we uh dig into your word this morning, <clears throat> um we thank you that you've given us minds. Thank you that you've given us the ability to to think and to reason, to learn things, to consume knowledge and and uh, and then use it. Uh, that's that's your design. You give us the ability to do that, and uh, so we want to be honoring. We want to be loving to you in in this aspect of that this morning. Would you give us a, a, a better understanding as we're talking about understanding and learning? Would you give us the ability this morning to learn uh, how we can love you more with our minds? We need your help in that, Holy Spirit, because we're incapable in and of ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> you, ever, uh, you ever wish, you ever wonder what it would be like to uh, the, the, there's a statistic out there. I don't remember exactly what it was. We only use what, twenty percent of our of our brain or something like that. What's that? Ten percent, something like that. Something very small. You ever wonder what it would what it would be like to be able to use one hundred percent of your brain? What that would be like, and how that would change the way that we, the way that we do things, and the way that we operate. There's a movie in 2011 called limitless and that's exactly this uh this this scenario yeah there's a drug and and the, this this guy takes a a drug and uh it allows him to use 100 percent of his brain and so in uh it changes him he he writes a book in an afternoon he becomes a financial genius he seems to have all the right answers and know exactly what to do in every single situation. Sounds pretty good, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. So say, would you take it? <laughs> would you take it? It'd be interesting. Anyways, no, I'm, I'm just processing. I'm thinking out loud, but uh, this idea of using our mind, our society puts a puts a, a high emphasis on the mind and it's usually uh it's usually mostly outside of the church i find that interesting outside of the church we 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 care about intellect and reason and logic the ability to discover things and to gain knowledge and 
and, uh, and, and our society loves the mind and puts a, a big emphasis on that, education, getting more and more and more education, learning, and, and, uh, and unfortunately sometimes that can be uh, mostly outside of the church. That love for the mind is mostly outside of the church. The church can either diminish or criticize that seeking or desiring knowledge, gaining understanding. And for example, we may think that religion is about feelings. It's all about feelings. It's not rational, like something you'd learn in science class. This is very untrue, right? If we have that, if we have that understanding of religion, it's, we're, we're missing a huge part of what it means to, to know God. God, because God created all of the things that we can learn about in science class, right? The, the, we, we think that it can, it can uh, that religion is something that doesn't in, involve logic, like you would learn in a math class. And as, I, as I'm thinking about this, I'm going, nothing I learned in math class was logical to me, but, uh, but it does involve logic. It does involve um, these equations that you're, supposedly they make sense to some people. I don't know. Uh, not me. But, uh, and this mindset inside the church, this mindset as, as believers, it can cause, uh, it can cause, those who are skeptical of Christianity, it can cause them to think that, that Christianity or faith in, in God in some way is some kind of hokey religion that, that's not based in facts. It's not based in, in real knowledge. You know, you've heard the term quite a bit lately, trust the science. Trust the science. Who created our, our ability to learn and, to, and the scientific process and, and all of the things that we learn about when, when we study science, biology, these types of things? Who created that stuff? The one that, the one that we trust in, the God that we've surrendered to created all of those things. He's the creator of all things. And so it makes sense. It, it would make sense that Christianity is a faith not, not separated from science, but is the, that is very... Science is grounded in God's Word. Not, not separated somehow. Science proves, in my opinion, and I, and I know there are others who may disagree with me, I believe that science proves 100% that there is a God, that there is a Creator. And so I don't believe you can separate science and faith or, or uh, some sort of belief in God. But when we have this mindset that it's separated somehow, we, we can, it can cause uh, people to believe that Christianity is something that's not grounded in fact. And it can cause Christians to believe or hold on to some sort of faith that is, um, uh, that is, is all about feelings. And if I, feel, if I feel this way, then it must be true. We're hearing that quite a bit lately, right? This is my truth. This is what's true for me. Facts don't really matter as long as this is the way that I feel. And so I'm going to move in that direction. J.P. Moreland said the danger in this is that people might come to believe that religious claims are neither, nearly, are neither factual in nature nor subject to rational evaluation. And yet in our Mark 12 passage here, God says, or Jesus says that part of the way that we are supposed to love God fully, all-encompassingly, is with our mind. With our mind, the things that we think about, the things that we know, the things that we process, the knowledge that we gain. The Greek word for mind is dianoia, dianoia, and there, there, uh, in the past, these, other, these last two weeks, we've gone back to, so we've looked at the Greek word, and then we've gone back to the Hebrew word out of Deuteronomy 6. Well, if you notice, I don't know if you noticed, when you all went home and did your homework on Deuteronomy 6 and, uh, and um, Mark 12 here, uh, in Deuteronomy 6, in the Deuteronomy 6 passage, the word mind is not there, is it? The word mind is not there. In the Deuteronomy 6 passage, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, heart, soul, 
and strength. And, and we're missing that word for mind in the Hebrew. But the Greek word for mind is dianoia. And the meaning is the, the mind is the faculty of understanding. Okay? Not just understanding, but it adds feelings and desire. The faculty for understanding feelings and desire. This aspect of feelings and desire, what, what part of ourselves do we generally uh, attribute those things to? The heart, right? Okay, we feel with our heart. Our desires are from our heart. Okay, this, this is saying, this Greek word is, is attributing the feelings and the desire to the mind, to our mind. And it can be strange for most of us today to, to think that way, but we want, to, or we want to separate. We generally want to separate what we think about and our feelings and what we do, and this seems to bring them all together. This seems to say that they're, they're, they're all that our, our mind has, has a, a, a part in all of these things. And so we talked about last week and the week before, the, wor- the meaning of words change, don't they? The meanings of, of words change and our understandings of those words change. And so we have to go back to, in the past, we've gone back to what the Hebrew word says. But again, the word mind is not in that Deuteronomy passage. So we have to go back and we have to look at what the ancient, the original writers understood about this. Okay? What they understood. And they seem to understand and realize the connection between these areas. The connection between these areas of life rather than separating them. There's a connection. And again, it's important to notice because in the Shema, in the, in the Deuteronomy 6 passage, the word mind is not used. And so we have to go back and we have to look. The Hebrews seem to view the heart and the soul and strength of a person as having the ability to think and gain knowledge. An example of this is, is in Paul's writing. Paul seems to show us that the biblical writers believed that the heart was more all-encompassing rather than just feelings. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One, One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. Paul says that you can believe in the resurrection, You can believe in a historical event, a physical event that happens. Paul says you can believe in that in your heart. You believe that with your heart. Jesus says it's important for us to love God with all of our mind. Loving God, loving God is an act of worship. Loving God is an act of worship. And if we're supposed to love God with our mind, that means what? Our mind is a place of worship. You ever think about that? Your mind being a place? Well, many times we, again, we talk about compartmentalizing and, and, and separating these areas of our life. And, and I think for, for most of us when we say uh, uh, worship, when, we say, when I say worship, I think most of us are going to go, Oh, yeah, that's Sunday morning when we come and we stand or sit and and we sing songs to the Lord. That's worship. Loving God is an act of worship. And so any way that you love God, any aspect of loving God is an act of worship. Our mind, we're supposed to love God with our mind. Our mind is a place of worship. And through Paul's writings, he emphasizes the importance of renewing, making new our mind and seeking truth and understanding with our minds. Paul tells the Ephesians in Ephesians 4.23 to be renewed in the spirit of your, of your mind. He prays for the Philippians. Let your love keep on growing. So what's keep on growing in knowledge in every kind of discernment. What is supposed to be be growing in our knowledge and understanding? Our love, right? 
Our love is supposed to be growing in knowledge in every kind of discernment so that you may approve the things that are superior and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ. To the Roman church, Paul writes in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed. How are we transformed? By the renewing of our mind so that you may discern what is good and pleasing and the perfect will of God. Do not conform to this age or conform to the pattern, other versions say, to the pattern of this world, to the way that the world does things. Don't conform and don't do it that same way. <clears throat> but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The way that you are transformed from doing things the way the world does things is by the changing of your mind, the renewing, the refreshing of your mind. And when that is done, we do this so that you ever wonder, God, I just, what's your, I just, uh, what your will for my life? You know, this question as, as I, uh, and I've asked this question so many times, I can't count. What's your will for my life? And there are things in scripture that are, are, are very clear. It says, it is the will of God that you give thanks. It is the will of God. You know, Scripture talks about these things that specifically tells us what the will of God is. But many times, like, oh, man, what college should I go to? Or should I take this job or this job? You know, and, and, and we, we wonder what we should do and what God's will for our life in so many situations is. It says, the, the way that we the way that we can we can we can know that we can discern what his word is, what his will is is by the changing of our mind if our mind is still corrupted if our mind is still in a worldly place and 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 not surrendered or not fully loving god in this way his will for us it we're not going to be able to discern that as easy it's going to take harder work and, and we might get it wrong it says it says by the transforming or the renewing of your mind so that you can discern what is the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. When our mind is transformed, we are, we are more able, we are able, no, I, will say, I will say able, we are able to discern what his will is. He emphasizes here in, that, uh, in, in Romans chapter 1, we're going to look at Romans chapter 1 just a little bit emphasizes the importance of resisting the temptation to look like the world, to dress like the world, to act like the world, to think like the world. He gives us in Romans chapter 1 a description of a depraved and a sinful world. And he says this, he says, Humanity rejected the knowledge of God. Rejected the knowledge of God. And it says, because of this, he gave them over to corrupt minds, to corrupt thinking. Romans chapter 1 is very interesting. It's... It, uh, you read Romans chapter 1, you see a lot of what we are living today, well, a lot of what our world looks like today. You wonder, why? How did we get to this place? Romans 1 tells us. Romans 1, 21 and 22. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Why was all that true? For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. We jump down a few verses, Romans 1, 28. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God. It's important for us to acknowledge God, isn't it? It's important for us to show gratitude, acknowledge where things come from and, and the blessings that are coming our way. Because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, 
God delivered them over to corrupt minds so that they do what is not right. God gave them over to corrupt minds. Now, does that mean that God no longer cared for them? God no longer loved them? And it's just God kind of going, forget you. I'm out of here. That's not the case. It's not the case. God's saying, this is the way you want to do things. I'm not going to force you to love me. If my wife forced me to love her, is that really love? No, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, compa- I'm, I'm being forced to. It's not me choosing to. God wants us to choose Him because He has best for us. Like la- we talked about last week, no mind has seen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor can the mind comprehend what God has for those who love Him. He desires for us to love him in this way. That's why he's saying this is the most important thing. Love me with all of your all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. All of it. Because I have unbelievably incredible, you cannot imagine things for you if you do. It's because he desires best for us. He's not saying forget you, but he's just saying, I'm not going to force you. I have things for you that you can't even imagine. I want you to love me because I have blessing. It's best for you if you do, but I'm not going to force you. If you don't want this, that's fine. Desperately desires for us to love him in this way, but he's not going to force us. You want to think this way? You want to do things this way? I'm going to give you over to. I'm going to allow you to do that. Deliver them over to a corrupt mind so that what they did was not right. There's a connection between a corrupt mind and the wickedness that we see in the world. He gives he gives those who those who reject him, he gives them over to those things that they that they that they would rather have and do instead of him. He gives them over to those things. And, and when we do that, we see destruction. We see sin rampant. We see pain. We see war. We see these things because we live in a sinful world that has rejected God and has been turned over to the corrupt thinking. There's a connection, and it's important for us as Christians to have a transformed mind, a different mind, a changed mind. So, if we can all agree that that is the goal, that is important to have a changed mind, what has the power to change our minds? We can change our minds temporarily, right? You go, I'm not going to look at that anymore okay and on our own how many times we find ourselves back into the same thing we said we're not going to do anymore (laughs) i'm not going to raise my voice at my kids anymore five minutes later (laughs) what has the power to change our mind to change our thinking what can renew our mind if this is an important place of worship, is this is a this is something we're supposed to love God with all of our mind. It's important, right? What has the power to change our minds? The Holy Spirit through his word has the power to change our minds. I can't do it on my own. And when we try, we will fail and then we will get discouraged. And then Many times we quit. Holy Spirit, through His Word, the Scriptures, you want to have a changed mind? You want to have a, a, a transformed mind? You want to change your thinking so that you can love God better? Read and know and submit yourself to Scripture. It's the words of God. 
is that important. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is ancient and it's old and it's outdated, right? No, the word of God is living and effective or, or some, other, some other versions say living and active. I like the active part. I like that word effective too. But uh, you know, we go, okay, is it, is it really going to do? Yes, it is. It's effective. Uh, but it's living and it's active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It, the word of God, is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from him, but all things, the things you think, the things that you want, but you would never tell anyone, the thoughts that you have about that coworker or that sibling or that spouse, all things are naked and exposed to the eye of him to whom we must give an account. The word of God is living and active. And it has the power to transform our thoughts and our intentions. Everett uh, F. Harrison says, The Christian refuses the norms of conduct employed by a sinful world, reaffirming for himself the spiritual norms benefiting the redeemed. If you are in Christ, you have been redeemed. You have, been, you have been captured, you've been taken out of a, a kingdom of darkness, Scripture says, and, and brought into a, a kingdom of light. We have gone from death to life. We've been redeemed, made new. <clears throat> Reaffirming for, uh, for himself the spiritual norms benef benefiting the redeemed. Aiding this process, the renewing of your mind, which seems to mean that the believer is to keep going back in his thoughts to the original commitment. You ever, have you ever heard somebody say, um, uh, you know, first love, or there used to be a, who sang that song? For, uh, first, Petra, right? <laughs> I think Petra. Yeah, you don't want me to sing it. I started to. Uh, that was close. <laughs> um, the, uh, Petra sang a song called First Love. Okay, it's talking about uh, the, the, this, this, uh, loving Jesus and that being your your first, your highest, your most, the, the the original. Okay, again, we love God. Why? We have the capacity to love God because He first loved us. It says going back to our commitment, our thought, uh, our uh, going back in our thoughts to our original commitment. When you make a commitment to Christ, when you make a commitment to to follow Christ. Okay? No matter what the cost, that is a commitment that we take seriously. And when we, when, we, when we find ourselves moving in our minds and our thoughts and our desires away from that, it's important for us to, he's saying, it's important for us to constantly remember and going, going back to this original commitment. Back to what it means to be committed. Back to what it means to be all in. Back to what it means to, when Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all. With all of these things. Okay? It's important for us to constantly go back in our minds. Am I loving God with all my heart right now? Am I loving God with all my soul? Am I loving God with all? And that word all is is key. I don't think it's something that we that is just a you know a, that's not a filler word. All. And Jesus said this. It's important. All. What does it look like to love God with all of your mind? All. When we make this commitment to love God with, or try to love God with all of our mind, we're committing to always having Him and His will in the highest place in our life. Preeminence, a place of preeminence. 
meaning before everything else. Above anything else we give our mind to. Above and before anything else that would seek to fill or capture our thoughts, knowledge, and intellect. We're constantly being bombarded, right? With things that are contrary to God's word. And the plan of God. Social media, news. There's we we live in a uh, our time. I don't. Uh, maybe I can't say that because I haven't been. Our time has never been more full than it is now. It seems like we're always busy. We're always being bombarded with things that are contrary to God's word. Constantly trying to fill things, fill your mind with things that are untrue. And so it's very important for us to be filtering all of this stuff. All of the stuff that comes in, all of the things that are bombarding us, it's important that we filter these things. It's important that we go back and we recall the truth from God's Word. How can we recall, how can I recall the things that God says in His Word if I don't know His Word? Again, I'm going to plug God's Word. Know it, read it, study it. I have hidden your Word in my heart, Psalmist says, that I might not sin against you. Hiding it in our heart makes it available to us, right? When I don't have my phone or my phone dies and I'm not carrying my Bible around, it, 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 we're supposed to hide his word in our heart. That's what gives, it gives that Jesus didn't have, Jesus didn't have the scrolls. I've, I've talked about this before. Jesus didn't have the scrolls when Satan came to him and was tempting him. He's like, uh, you know, okay, hold on. Let me, let me roll this out. Okay. No, it says here that I'm supposed to know. He didn't do that. He knew it. He had it readily available because it was hidden in him. He'd known it since he was a kid. It was part of the Jewish uh, upbringing as, as a boy. And they had an incredibly vast knowledge at an incredibly young age of the Word of God because they placed an importance on it. It, was, it, it had value. We've lost that. We go, oh, okay, yes, I can go to church and I can hear the Word and I can whatever. And if I need it, I can pull it up on my phone and I can do it that that's not the way, it's, it's, that's not the most effective way to do things. I've hidden your word in my heart. It's tucked away. It's there. It's readily available. You have to continually bring, be bringing the truth of God's word to our mind. And just like I was describing, it takes discipline. It takes discipline. And that right there is very telling, isn't it? I think we live in a we live in a society that lacks discipline. I want to be more disciplined. It's going to take discipline to hide his word in your heart. It's going to take discipline to to change your thinking, to allow the Holy Spirit to change your thinking. Many times we, we we live in a in a uh, in a I want it now society. Um, I don't want to have to work for it. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to go through the stuff that it you know I don't want to I don't want to take the class to learn this. Uh, I just want to know it. I, I'm that way with playing the guitar. I've always wanted to play the guitar. I just don't want to take the time to learn it. That's what it's just a lack of discipline. I just want to be able to you know what's uh, the Matrix and all of a sudden he's like. I know Kung Fu. And you're like, just download, whatever. Go watch it. it. Takes discipline. It takes discipline. Taking captive the things. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. And this is a whole this is a whole nother six series sermon right here. Since the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolishing of strongholds. 
We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Other versions say we take every thought captive and bring it into submission to Christ. That is saying every thought that pops into your mind, everything, everything that goes into your mind, we are supposed to evaluate that, take it captive, these thoughts that are, that, are, that are bombarding us, take that captive before it goes in and we go, is this in line with God's word? Is this in line with God's will? Is this in line with God's plan? If it's not, I'm going to reject that. If it is, I'm going to take that, bring it in and let it take root. Take every thought captive. Everything that pops into your mind, take it captive, capture it, and bring it into submission to Christ. We take every thought captive. God cares about the things it's important. He says it's important, the things that we think about. He cares about truth. He cares about knowledge. He cares about wisdom. We see these things all throughout the scriptures. And he wants us to understand Sin has impacted our minds. Again, we go back to the Romans 1 passage. He gave them over to corrupt minds, corrupt thinking. Sin. Because of this, because sin has impacted our minds, we must be transformed in our minds, transformed in our thinking by the power of the Holy Spirit and the purifying of His Word. His word washes over us. His word purifies us. Purifies our hearts and our minds and our thinking and our actions. When we're washed with the word. So how do we love God with all of our minds? How do we do this? There's some practical ways there, right there in scripture. Being aware of what you are thinking takes discipline. We have let our minds go. <laughs> we have let our minds go. We allow too many things that are not lining up with God's Word into our minds. How do those things get in there? Well, some of the things that we watch, that affects what we think about, right? Some of the things that we listen to, that affects the things that we think about, right? We've removed the filter of God's Word. We've got to put that filter back in so that everything that comes in, everything that we see, everything that we hear, then affects our thoughts and our minds filtered through God's Word. We love God with all of our minds by allowing Him to transform our minds. <clears throat> we use our renewed minds every day to figure out problems and gain knowledge, help other people. He gave us those minds. He gave us our minds. He wants us to, to think. He wants us to reason. He wants us to, to gain knowledge and know things. <clears throat> and then he wants us to use those things that we learn and that we know for, again, first of all, his glory. And when our first priority is his glory, when we're loving him with everything that we have, he loves us, and it will in turn be for our good. But it's important for us to, as we learn, as we gain knowledge, as we Google things, as we research things, it's important for us to be filtering all of that through God's Word. <clears throat> the only way to know for sure if an idea, the, the, the thing that you're learning, a uh, thing that you read or are or, or, or researching, the only way that we can know if that idea 
is biblical or not is to actually know what the, the, the Bible says. To actually know. You know? <clears throat> Reading an article, you're researching something, and you go, I don't know. Well, it is good to look things up. It is fine. You know, you go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more research. I'm going to take... But again, that's filtering through God's Word. So it's, I'm not saying you have to have the whole Bible memorized. Uh, that would be fantastic and know it like... Like, uh, like, like not even needing to pull it out. But as you're reading something and you're filtering something, is it, does it line up with God's word? If it, if it doesn't, then, then we have to look at that in a different way, right? We have, to, we have to look at that in a different way. We go, okay, this is, this is truth and this is not. And sometimes it, it takes, again, discipline to be able to pull out in the same article, the same, the same thing that you're researching, the same thing that you're hearing. There can be bits of truth. Sometimes we... We, well, we used to, I don't know, we don't much anymore, but we used to watch commercials and then we used to, 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 to mute the commercial and go, okay, kids, what was the lie in that commercial? Trying to teach our kids to think critically about what the lie is. And if you can recognize that you separate the lie from truth and you go, man, this beer commercial, oh man, look at everybody partying and they're all, they're all pretty and good looking. And so, man, if I drink a lot of beer, then I'm going to be pretty and good looking and I'm going to be popular and I'm going to be, life is just going to be awesome. That's the lie, right? We have to be able to pull out in, in what we allow into our minds. We have to be able to pull out what is truth and what is the lie. Because we're believing too many lies. Just like every other part of the of our body and our being, God give God gave us these things. He gave us our mind and He gifted us with these things to use for His glory. We will love God with all of our mind by allowing all of our thoughts all of our knowledge and all of our intellect to be transformed and shaped by God. And our desire here at Central Church is that we will be radically obedient to the commandment of God to love Him with all of our minds. Amen? Amen. Father, we fall uh, short of this in so many ways and so many times and so many areas. And... <clears throat> I pray that your Holy Spirit would help us. So many things filling our minds and uh, desiring our attention. One day, <clears throat> Scripture says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess <clears throat> that you are Lord. And just like the song that we sang, our desire is that that day would be now and that day would be today and not someday. <laughs> <clears throat> we desire to love you more holistically with our <clears throat> entire being and, and our minds as part of that uh, Father, I pray that you would protect us from the things that <clears throat> the world would throw at us that would be contrary to your word, the things that would draw us away from uh, fully loving you with all of our minds. Would you, uh, would you put a shield over our minds that uh, would filter out those things that are not... Uh, bringing you glory, that we'll be able to process clearly. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, sound thinking, sound judgment. Pray that we would use that sound thinking. <clears throat> Change our minds, transform our minds, the uh, Holy Spirit, through your word, would you give us a hunger and a desire and a thirst for your word? <clears throat> give us understanding as we open it. 
we need your we need your help in understanding and and uh would you reveal things to us that would change us even today as we go home give us a hunger and a thirst for your word in jesus name amen amen if you have any questions I would love to talk to you. If you need prayer for anything, we would love to pray for you. And uh, if not, stay warm. Go home. Get a nice warm bowl of soup. Sit next to the fire and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. God bless.